Shalom and welcome to today's virtual Israel tour. Over the last two weeks, we've been talking about some of the amazing outcomes of the 1967 Six Day War. Today, we want to show you a prophetic shift that occurred when the Temple Mount came back into Jewish hands, opening the door to the building of the Third Jewish Temple. Some called it a kiss from heaven. On June 7, 1967, Israeli Brigade Commander Motegor made an announcement the Jews had waited to hear for some 2,000 years. Retaking this ground was important for a number of reasons. For one, it's where King Solomon built the first Jewish temple. After the Babylonians destroyed it, Zerubbabel laid the foundation stone for a second temple that was later expanded by King Herod. It fell at the hands of the Romans in 70 AD. When Commander Gore declared that the Temple Mount was back in Jewish hands, it rekindled hope for a long-awaited third temple. The Six-Day War was a miracle of biblical proportions and um, was a, um, a cataclysmic opening of a, of a new era for, for Israel and for the whole world. Rabbi Haim Richman of the Temple Institute is dedicated to rebuilding the Jewish Temple. He sees the time since the Six-Day War as a prophetic shift. It would be hard, I think, not to see what's happened in the past 50 years as a tremendous uh, jumpstart, a tremendous fast forward. It's, it's, um, it's more than prophetic. It's like a kiss from heaven, you know? It's like a divine kiss. It's an, it's an intimate brush with the reality of God's compassion and love, uh, and he keeps his promises. The Institute shares a key connection to the battle for Jerusalem. Its founder, Rabbi Yisrael Ariel, served with the 55th Paratrooper Brigade that captured the Temple Mount. After the victory, a Jordanian guide gave them a remarkable tour. His job was to carry the company machine gun. There's a very beautiful photograph of that. He actually, the first night of the liberation of Jerusalem, he, he was given the task of um, guarding over the spot of um, the Dome of the Rock which of course we believe is the Holy of Holies. The story though that he told us is that the soldiers were on the Temple Mount and it was just like the first hour or so. And uh, they were approached by a, a Jordanian fellow in Western dress who explained that he was the official tour guide for the Jordanian parliament and he offered to take the soldiers and show them the sites on the Temple Mount. And uh, he takes the soldiers, you know, the, the rabbi there and he says, uh, well, this is exactly where um, the sanctuary stood. This is where the, the altar stood. And then this is where the menorah stood. It tells him all these things about the history of the Holy Temple. Finally, the rabbi asked him, why are you telling us all this? And he said, well, we have tradition from our fathers, they from their fathers, that one day the Jews would wage a war and conquer this mountain and rebuild the Holy Temple. And I assume that you're starting tomorrow. And I want this to be my part, my part in helping you. What was their reaction to that story? Well, gosh, I guess, <laughs> I guess they were pretty surprised, but the bottom line is, in hindsight, it doesn't look like we were ready. Fifty years later, that's changed, with the Temple Institute preparing blueprints and gathering official temple elements, such as the priestly garments. Richmond is also dispelling myths about the temple on today's digital loudspeaker, YouTube. Let's start at the beginning. What was the Holy Temple really all about? All of this means talk of rebuilding the temple is no longer considered a fringe idea. Today, there is a lobby in the Knesset of how many members of Knesset that are constantly speaking about Jewish rights to pray on the Temple Mount. There are members of Knesset that actually talk about the rebuilding of the Holy Temple. Do you understand that 20 years ago, these people wouldn't have been given a moment on prime time television in Israel to say these things. They would have been laughed out. So, a few years ago, this was considered fringe? Zealots. Lunatics, peculiar. Today it's mainstream. One of those members is Yehuda Glick. Ten years ago there was not a single member of Knesset who ascended the Temple Mount. Today we have 20 of the Knesset members who are interested in ascending the Temple Mount, praying on the Temple Mount, and are part in the battle for the redemption of the Temple Mount and for bringing the Temple Mount back into the center of the next, next step in the redemption process. Richmond sees the temple through the eyes of the prophet Isaiah, who wrote 3,000 years ago that God's house would be a house of prayer for all nations. It means basically that 
there is a God in the world and that the best is yet to come and that we are so connected to him and to each other and to that purpose and to all humanity and it's just a wonderful privilege to be here with you today to be looking out over Jerusalem and to realize that we're living in probably the most important time in history. If you believe in the God of Israel and you see his hand on his people and you understand the tremendous uh, changes that have gone on over the years, you see that the one who brought us this far isn't finished and will keep his promises. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, the Temple Mount, Jerusalem. If you'd like to know more about the Six-Day War, this pivotal and many say prophetic time in Israel's history, CBN Documentaries produced a docudrama called In Our Hands, The Battle for Jerusalem. If you'd like a copy for yourself, your home group, or your church, you can go to cbn.com slash in our hands. Tomorrow, the Ark of the Covenant that traveled with the children of Israel through the desert on their journey to the Promised Land. We'll take a look at where some believe the missing Ark might be.